Hello everyone, my name is Haley and I work here on the Red X content team. Um, today we've got an exciting interview. Um, we have Brad Korn with us today. Um, and we do interviews to help you and agents like you uh, get clear expectations about how much time, energy, and money it takes to be successful at prospecting. Whether it's expired, FISBO, sphere of influence, um, we find great examples like Brad so you can pull out things um, from their businesses that can work for you and your business. Um, so today we are going to talk about sphere of influence with Brad, um, who is an expert in it. Um, with 29 years of selling real estate um, under his belt and has 100, he gets about 100 sales on average a year for the last 20 years. Um, but Brad, why don't you introduce yourself a little bit more? Oh, no problem. Thank you, Haley. Uh, yeah, I'm glad I'm on the call today, especially when you're talking about saving time and energy and making this more simple. Um, this, this call today is about having fun selling real estate again. And you know, our, um, what I've spent over the last 29 years building, which by the way, the first three years, those numbers aren't included in there. I think I had a whopping, uh, 10 sales in my first three years in real estate. I remember making like 10 grand in like a first year and a half or something in real estate. So it was not super successful. And I didn't have a lot of top agents that I could copy from and learn from and do all that stuff. So, um, yeah, basically, I, I read the E-Myth real estate agent book about 20 years ago, 25 years ago. And I just implemented the book from cover to cover, created systems. And that has allowed me to sell 100 homes a year every year for the past 20 something years. But along the way, you know, we, we do fun stuff too. I've won a marketing contest with realtor.com. They did a big one at the National Association of Realtors Conference. And I won a five carat diamond, got picked out of the nation as the, the best uh, marketing plan for realtor.com, which is kind of crazy. That's awesome. Um, but really, it's just, it, it is what it is. And then, you know, again, just marketing. I love marketing. So I've gotten featured in real estate publications like Real Estate Magazine, Realtor Magazine, um, been on HGTV. I mean, guys, get on HGTV. They didn't charge me to do, you know, be an agent on my house is worth what on HGTV. That's free <laughs> marketing. So I love marketing and I love free and I love having fun and I love, you know, selling 100 homes a year. I've done it with as few as one person and as many as eight or nine people. So um, it's all about systems for me. I love that. I love that you mentioned that it was a little bit of a struggle at the beginning um, because I think a lot of agents think, yeah, let's be successful. Let's get off. But, but it's it's nice to see you come from struggle. You've come from um, not being very successful to, to what you are today. So um, yeah. I'm excited to dive into your systems and, and how you did um, come out of that. Um, so... Uh, just a little bit of what you can expect from today's interview. Um, we're going to talk about sphere of influence, like I said, um, sphere of influence marketing and prospecting, um, what you should do, why it's important, and how and when you should do it. Um, so let's dive into the questions. We're going to first start out with the why and the what, um, just an insight into sphere of influence prospecting and marketing. Um, so Brad, first question for you, how do you define sphere of influence? Right. So really for me, sphere is anyone that I know who they are or they know who I am. That's my sphere. Right. So what, what I have to do at that point is become top of mind in their mind for the real estate slot. So for example, anybody who knows me probably in my, in my area knows I sell real estate. So that's what I want. A, a sphere is anybody that now when they hear my name, they know real estate pops up or if they're out, let's just say they're at church on a Sunday and they're out in the front talking to people and they hear the word real estate, they just think of Brad Corn, yeah. um, the corn team, Kansas City, you know, so uh, the K.O.R.N. really paid off for me. Even though I used to get picked on as a little kid in grade school. Uh, corn dog and all that other fun stuff. Corn <laughs> paid off big time in real estate. <laughs> right. <laughs> corn for the K, you know? So no, it is. And that's what we'll talk about today is anyone and everyone you get on the phone into a two way conversation is potentially your sphere if you handle it right. So, right. 
And, and that kind of goes into my next question of how is sphere of influence prospecting different from other forms of lead generation? Yeah. So this is the, you guys pay attention because that is a great question, Haley. Perfect example, expireds. Expireds is lead generation. However, if you say get into a two-way conversation with somebody and you turn them into sphere so that you can connect with them and you become the top of mind awareness person for real estate with that person after that conversation, you are going to more than quadruple your business and results. So expired for sale by owners, knocking on doors, all that's all that's lead generation and lead prospecting. The problem is we do the, our industry taught us to get the next deal, get the next deal, get the next deal. So we're all ripping through these lists and it's not fun calling total strangers, dialing, trying to follow some script to try and trick them into staying on the phone long enough for me to try and build a, a connection with them when I'm not even asking connection type questions. Right. I don't know anything about this person. Like if they really want to move or, you know, if they got their price expired, I love expired because it's like, so if you got your price today, are you telling me you wouldn't sell? You wouldn't take that offer? And they'd be like, well, no, if we got our price that we wanted, we would sell today. Well, then we should meet because you can't get your price when you're not on the market. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I can get your price, but you can't get it while you're not on the market. So we need to meet and talk, you know? Right, so, right. but then it, it's, it, this is the part that's important. It's like, why were you guys moving anyway? And I know people are starting to pick up on these kind of scripts, yet they don't use them because this person is not moving right now. We're taking a break for the next six months to a year. It was a horrible experience. Okay, I'll call them back in a year, right? Yeah, right, like you will. So what you do is find out why they were moving, why that was important, and see if you can just connect with them a little bit. I don't care if they're going to meet with me or not, but it's not about whether or not they're selling right now or whether I can convince them to sell right now. It's about just human to human, what's going on, why didn't it work out? Sorry, that didn't work. Or yeah, we probably should meet whichever way it goes. Either way, I've connected with them. So they go into my database now. And now I stay in touch with them consistently, persistently after that. And this is the crazy part. I don't talk about real estate all the time because mm -hmm. otherwise, if they were ready to sell, I'd already be over there with a listing appointment and the sign in the yard and have the listing agreement signed. So we're just now going to be friends, if you want to call it that, or sphere for, until they're ready. So the first conversation might take a little bit longer, but every conversation after that is very programmed and planned. It's very systematic. The, right. the first time I get you on the phone, if we connect, if we connect well enough that I got your address and I can write you a handwritten note that doesn't have my business card in it and it just says Brad and it was great talking to you and finding out about your family, um, glad to hear that, you know, you love Florida or whatever, you know, whatever came up in the conversation, if I can write that note and then my system tells me, call them in four weeks, call them in eight weeks, not to bug them or use a script. Just, Hey, I was just thinking of you. It was really great connecting with you a couple weeks ago. Right. Um, and it was exactly four weeks ago, as a matter of fact, cause that's when the system programs it. And then every three months forever uh, until they list, sell or die. Right. Right. So that's where the system comes in. So everybody goes into my database and 98% of the people that we randomly talk to throughout the day are not moving right now. One to 2% are moving now. So the other 98 people still go in my database and still get a note from me and still stay on my system until they are ready. Right. So what yeah. you're saying, I think, agents lose a lot of opportunities when they just get on the phone. Are you looking to buy or sell? They say, no, hang up, done. Yeah. That is a lot of, it's more of a, it's a longer approach. It takes longer, but it will give you more results than the one or 2% that are looking to sell right now. Yeah. So the difference is if you know, the average person is moving every five to seven years, right? That's kind of what the industry hears. And in the slower market, it's every 10 years. It's not 20 years, right? And the right. average person isn't moving every year or every month. So you're not going to talk to everybody every month and always get an appointment. So if the average person is moving every five to seven years and I talk to a hundred people, 
right? So a hundred people divided by seven years is what? 70 or seven, uh, let's see here. A hundred people, go calculator, divided by seven years is 14 people are going to move out of those hundred people I just talked to this year, right? Right. But take this one step further. So this year, 14 people are moving. But if I divide that by 12 months, the day I'm talking to them, only one of those 14 people actually know they're one of the 14 people that are going to move this year, this month right now. Right. So see, here's what's crazy. If I just called those same 100 people every single month for the next seven years, here's a quick math question for you. How many sales would I have? 100. <laughs> Because I would have 14 sales every year for the next seven years because I called the same 100 people every single month and one of them's the next person is coming through the line. Right. So you're usually, I mean, if you've heard any, any past tracking of calling leads and stuff, you always hear call 100 and you get two or three appointments. That's because one is moving now, one's moving next month, so they're starting to think about it. And the third one is kind of random. You don't always get three appointments. You get somewhere between two to three appointments. Right. So right. you just might have caught somebody who's thinking about it two months in advance. Right. So, yeah, the numbers, the way the numbers play out, it's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy that agents don't understand that. And they, um, they miss out on easy. It's just a numbers game, right? So... And it's a numbers game that you keep every number because guess what? Everybody does move. Yeah. Everybody yeah. does move. So of that hundred, keep those hundred. Now next month, do a new hundred plus the old hundred. And then the following month, do a new hundred plus the old hundred plus the very first hundred. You're going to be selling a hundred homes a year in one year. If you have 1200 people in your database after a hundred per month, that's 1,200 people. That's 120 people moving a year. That is 10 people moving every single month. Yeah. That's when you don't have to worry about lead generation as much because it's lead, it's lead receiving versus lead generating. I like that. Lead receiving yeah. instead of lead generating. Yeah. That's awesome. Cool. So um, another question is what are common misconceptions when it comes to sphere of influence uh, that other agents um, are thinking or things like that. Well, so I don't know what the misconception is. I, I don't know how people don't figure this out. Like, <laughs> right. Yeah. You, you love calling and talking to total strangers and convincing them to stay on the phone with you long enough to actually start a conversation. Unless that's fun for you. <laughs> you do realize that when you get into real estate and you sent out the first announcement to your hundred people, I'm in real estate, right? Again, only one of them are moving this month. That's why you always get your first sale pretty quick. And then by month three, you're broke again, right? The misconception is that you have enough people that know who you are and you know who you are to generate 100 sales a year within 12 months of starting real estate if you just are on purpose about what Haley and I are talking about and it's about sphere. Sphere meaning anybody who knows who I am or not, I know who they are. Yeah. My goal is to get them on the phone and just connect. Forget about real estate. I do not sell real estate every day. I barely sell real estate. I, I tease and jokingly say I'm probably the laziest hundred sale a year agent on the planet <laughs> because I'm out playing, having fun. I mean, you ask Kurt. If you guys know Kurt from Red X, ask him. I am out having fun fun wherever I am. I go to the baseball games. I go to the football games, all that. So the misconception is when I say connect with five people a day, that's like my, my minimum. If I can add five new relationships a day to my database every day, say five days a week, really like take two guilt-free days off, whatever, or you just don't do it for a couple of days, but mm -hmm. five days a week, five people a day is a hundred people a month is 1200 people a year. If you just did that one activity. So the very first thing everybody says, Haley, is where the heck will I find five people a day? Right. So let me break out the misconception. The misconception is I didn't say find five people a day that want to buy or sell right now. Oh, got it? Right. 
it's fine five people a day i don't care who they are they're all going to move in the next five to seven years anyway so connect with them get them in your database everybody you meet from this day forward goes into the database so one of the things i just i'm just preaching till i'm blue in the face is and that's royals blue by the way but we're last place this season so i really don't <laughs> play that card very much uh we're hoping praying the chiefs do something but <laughs> Those, those 100 people or those 1,200 people, look right now at your Facebook friends list, okay? Look at your contacts. Go to your contacts on your cell phone and pull up your first contacts and scroll to Z and go to the very bottom of your contacts and it'll tell you how many people are there. Everyone listening to this phone on the low end might have 300, 400, 500 people. If you don't have 500 people between your Facebook or social media following list and your contacts record in your phone, you got a hard start and maybe you probably should have thought twice about getting into real estate. <laughs> you gotta be kind of a social butterfly and you gotta know people. It's a people business, right? Definitely. Most people listening to this call have anywhere from 500 to 700 or 1,000 to 1,200 people on their just their Facebook friends list. And they're gonna have somewhere between five to 700 up to 4,000 people on their cell phone contacts list, right? Right. So let's stop right there. I'm not even talking about my Instagram followers and Twitter mm -hmm. followers and because all those people know who I am. They're following me or I'm following people. So all those people are who we're talking about here, right? Right. So if you created a master list of just that group of people, let's just say it's a thousand on Facebook and a thousand on your phone. That's 2,000 people. 2,000 divided by seven is 285 transactions or 285 people are moving in the next 12 months, every 12 months for the next seven years, right? Right. Divide that by 12, that is 23 transactions a month just on your Facebook and your cell phone list. So here's the misconception. You can't take all 2,000 people and throw them in a mass mailing list and blast out your postcards because <laughs> you're not even 90 percent of them aren't even going to see anything. And you contacting people out of your database, and if you think you're really well connected with your database, I challenge you're only really connecting with about 10 percent of your database. So my 23 deals just turned into two deals a month because I'm only naturally connecting with about 10 percent of my database. All of these stats I th are throwing out have been manually con calculated in my head. So there's no form I'm gonna send you where some research was done on it. I'm telling you it's 29 years of coaching top agents, tracking my own business. We're all keeping in touch with about 10% of our database. We know 20% of the database is moving every single year. So you gotta keep in touch with 100% of it to capture 100% of it over seven years. I know I'm, I just went crazy on numbers, didn't I? Love that. <laughs> so if you break those 2,000 people down to five a day, just take five people off your phone, find their address, find their phone number, find the email, use Google, use the internet, use Facebook. Facebook will tell you where they live right now. Fastpeoplesearch.com will tell you their address most of the time. I mean, there's just all kinds of resources out there. Google will find them. So just take the time to find five of them, call them, how are you, drop them a note. Heck, if you don't have their address, ask for it. Say, man, it's so great catching up with you. Where are you guys living these days? Oh, we're on XYZ Street Tax Record in your MLS. There they are, right there, most of the time. So drop them a handwritten note in the mail and then start that follow-up program to stay in touch with them from that day forward. Right. And you say, you mentioned that you only naturally connect with such a small portion of people that you know or that know you. Um, and so a lot of agents would say, oh, I don't want to sound like a salesperson. I don't want my friends and family to think I'm only talking to them because of real estate. How do you make that sound more natural? How do you make that sound more friendly? Oh, God, you ask great questions. <laughs> so it's a process, okay? Here, that's the other misconception. Yeah. Because we're taught to look for the next deal, we're taught to be salespeople and talk about real estate, you know? And some of the people I've heard out there, it's like, you shouldn't be sending them recipes and all this stuff. You're a real estate agent. You should be sending real estate stuff. Okay, but 98% of the people said, we're not moving right now. So 
I'm going to send you real estate stuff every month. <laughs> That's the fastest way to get off their radar. Right. So really it is just call your family and just say, oh my gosh, cousin Joe, I haven't talked to you since the last family reunion. You know, it's like, you're my favorite uncle. I here, I, I use this example. This is a real example. My first wife, um, I worked retail. I managed a, a retail clothing store. She worked at the same company. We ended up in the same town in Wichita, Kansas. This was a long time ago, 20, 20, 30 years ago, right? Mm -hmm. So we meet at these manager meetings before we were both in Wichita. I was in Columbia and she was in Topeka, you know, whatever, Columbia, Missouri, Topeka, Kansas, hundreds of miles apart. We meet at these manager meetings. She's really cool. We had fun, party, you know, managers meetings, how that goes. And <laughs> we're just having a good time, fun, laughing the whole time. I'm like, that girl is so cool. I am going to keep in touch with her, right? Wrong. A year later, I get a call out of the blue. I'm in my store. Say, hey, it's Eva. Um, they're transferring me to Wichita. And I'm like, no way. I'm in Wichita. And then as when I hung up, I was like, man, I was going to keep in touch with her. She was really cool. Yeah. I ended up marrying her a month after she moved to Wichita. And yeah. I never would have called her if she didn't call me. That is 90, over 90% of our database. So everybody listening to this, if you can think of one person, you're like, man, I haven't talked to them in forever. There's a lot more people behind that that you haven't talked to forever, including clients that we sold houses to. So here's another thing. I sold somebody a house five years ago, haven't talked to them since. This is very typical or two years or three years ago, whatever. Sold the house, didn't really keep in touch. Our databases are full of those people, right? Mm -hmm. So what you have to do is you have to get reconnected with them because they, even though you've met them, so there's this met and have it met and all of that stuff out there. Guys, this is about connected and not connected. So I may have sold somebody a house. I cannot put them on some really cool follow-up mailing program and think that I'm going to be top of mind when I haven't talked to them in three years. Mm -hmm. So they're going to get something once a month from me in my blast mailing and hopefully they see a billboard and hopefully they remember me. However, if I called them and I connected, you know, gosh, guys, it's been three years. I can't believe I haven't stayed in touch. I remember our transaction was fun. Uh, you guys love the house. Oh, we love the house. Everything's great, blah, blah, blah. Well, it was just great connecting with you. I just, I really thought of you guys today and I just was feeling horrible that I hadn't stayed in touch. Um, so anyway, I just want to let you know, I was thinking of you. Glad everything's great. Did I talk to them about moving? No. Do I have to talk to them about moving? No, because they know I'm a real estate agent. I'm the one that sold them the house. Right now I drop them a simple note. So great connecting with you. Glad to hear the kids are doing well and that the house has been working out great. And, you know, just really love talking to you, Brad. Now there's something, if you listen to that, if you hit the rewind button on this, if you're watching the recording of it, Listen to that. There's nothing about, I'm so glad I got you on the phone, glad we got to talk and let me know if there's anything I can help with you. If you know of anybody else moving, will you call me? Let me know, here's my card. Me, 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 I, 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 it's all about me. So my note cards are all about them and I try to write it without the word I, me or my in it. Now, I'm a marketing guy. <laughs> everything after that note card is going to have my card in it or the branding in it or my logo in it. I'm a real estate agent. Right. Even if it is a recipe, because remember 98% of the people aren't moving. I don't mind sending recipes. I think they're silly. And most of the stuff I send is really stupid. And in fact, I'll give you a free site that you can go see all the stuff I send out that generates me a hundred sales a year. Don't judge me on my content because content doesn't matter. It's the connection and the relationship and the phone calls that make the business. There's some yeah. dumb letters in there and I challenge you to mail them out. <laughs> it's fun. I, I love that, that you say, don't focus on me, my, because people can feel that if you're talking to them and you're being, uh, if you're not being genuine, they can feel like the first thing that comes out of his mouth is real estate. He just wants to buy or buy, uh, help me sell my home, whatever. And then, yeah they forget about you. But it is if you show them that you actually care and things and then you follow up with all that stuff. It's that's awesome. Yeah. Um, so like another question to follow up with that is you kind of hinted at um, 
ways that agents fail at prospecting their sphere of influence is because they either forget, they're forgetful, they forget the people that they're contacting, or they don't keep in touch, or they do focus on me, me, me. Um, what other ways or why do you think agents aren't successful um, with their SOI or as successful as they could be? Yeah, well, it's because it's not your fault, first of all. Our industry, we start out in the whole so far because you thought it was three or $400 to go to real estate school. And then it's like, what? I need another $500 to get this. I need or $100 to take the test. And now you want me at what? 500 bucks to get lock boxes and what? $1,000 to join this board thing? What? <laughs> you're you're $2,000 in the hole when you went to real estate school as you're get me out of this situation I'm in. You've just buried yourself in more of it. And your first sale may not happen for 60 to 90 days because it's going to take a week or even if you had somebody ready to buy right now, you're going to take a week or two to find them in the house or maybe if you really get lucky the first day, but then it's closing in 35 to 45 days. And that's if the inspections don't cancel the contract or mm -hmm. they don't get beat out on multiple offers in this current market. And you have to write, you have to do that three or four or five times. You're talking 60 to 90 days out. So now 90 days out, you're not closing three deals a month where your life is all cush because now you got to do it again and you got to do it again. So you either need to start real estate with three, four or five buyers on day one that are ready to write contracts right now to get consistent, or it's going to take you three months, six months or a year to get this thing consistent. So by going after the next piece of business, you're on this roller coaster ride of real estate. And it's like, you know, I do a lot of lead generation or, I, you know, right when, right when your clients get their first expired list, man, their business can go up and then they get really, really busy. And then they're trying to service all the deals they got and they quit doing what got them busy. And all of a sudden they, oh, I haven't used that list for three months, man, three months can disappear like that in real estate. Yeah. Next thing you know, you're back at the bottom of the hill and then you have to lead generate again. So I came up with a new saying this weekend because we went to the amusement park with the family. And I was like, roller coasters are for amusement parks, not business. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so they were a blast while we were there riding them. But man, when you've got 100 sales a year every year and I already know 2020, I'm going to sell 100 homes a year. It's just it's autopilot because the systems that are set up and the my contact management system tells me when to call somebody next and it spreads it out over the whole year versus trying to do like a reconnect with my whole database. I'm going to call everybody next month. I'm going to call everybody from A to Z and really connect again. They usually most agents do that one time they get their 1% conversion and then they're back to dealing with business as it flows and there's just no control. So, with your sphere, every single person is now sphere and you have to stay in touch with them. And that means picking up the phone and talking to them. Okay. So I would, to, to answer your question directly, the biggest problem is the reconnection call is almost always going to take about 20 to 45 minutes. You haven't talked to these people in a while. You're reconnecting. So that feels very unproductive. Yeah. I will tell you this, and I promise you this, you will never be on the phone with that person more than a minute ever again. If you call them five more times in the next 12 months, your calls will be a minute or less, typically 30 seconds or less until they become a client. And when they become a client, it won't be you calling them going, oh, we're glad you called today. No. If you talk to them three, four, five times a year, they got a handwritten note from you, they get two-way conversations in social media that aren't about real estate, the day they decide won't be your call day, but they'll pick up the phone and call you and go, hey, we're, we're kind of wondering if we shouldn't figure out what our house is worth. That means now I can go into my scripts and get them to list now versus be on the fence and all that other stuff. So it, it's... It's the long game plan. Um, and if you just take the first hour of your day and focus on the long game, you can go play your short game for another six hours the rest of the day. But do your long game for an hour every day. And in six months, a year, two years from now, you won't need as much of the short game and you won't be working the long game anymore either. You're not going to do it for six hours and then do the short game for an 
an hour, just don't work as hard. Right. And Brad, how expensive is it to work your sphere of influence? Listen, I, I have no overhead, no overhead. I don't buy any leads. Okay. I buy postage because I send letters out. I like to mix my mediums up. I do not do all email drip plans and I don't do bulk mailing. So I don't really have expenses there. What I have is a roll of stamp. Oh, we're not really on video, but I have a, a roll of stamps sitting here. It's the forever stamps, a hundred on a roll. And those sit on my desk with uh, the envelopes and the note cards. I'm holding them up right here. There's a blank envelope. There's a note card. And I, every person that comes through my phone, I connect, even if it's a sign call or an ad call. Just had one uh, yesterday or day before. You know, hey, I drove by this house, been trying to get some information on this house on Elm. Oh, yeah, that one, that one sold as soon as it hit the market. So you're probably looking for a good deal, I bet. Yeah, it looked like a good deal. You know, well, let me do this. Let me let me get you into my system that the realtors use, and I can get you those properties the second they hit the market. Mm -hmm. And all I do is set them up on an MLS search to with an instant ASAP email when something that met their criteria hits, right? So I put that in after that call and I'm talking to him on the phone going, well, where do you live now? He's like, well, I'm in Kansas City. And in the meantime, I'm pulling him up because I'm in front of my computer and I'm putting his name in for Kansas City on fastpeoplesearch.com and there's his address. It's like, oh, are you over on Skittle Street or whatever? And he's like, yeah, that's where I am. It's like, oh, cool. So now here's a total stranger that I just offered assistance to I'm getting him the deals before they ever show up on Zillow and Truly, which by the way, I told him on the sites you're looking at, you're getting them after they've gone through the realtor system. So it's behind and that's why you're calling on stuff that's sold. Mm -hmm. So anyway, here's a total stranger, but we connected on the phone and believe me, he's in his car. Background noise is horrendous. I can hardly hear what he's saying. But I said, you know, I can't, his email was real intense because I'm like, give me your email and I'll send you a list of the properties now that are available. Um, and I couldn't hear him. So he texted it to me, but I had his address. I got his email and he, I got his phone number. He's calling me from his cell phone. All three things I need to drop him a handwritten note to send him properties. He sends me a text back. Thank you so much for everything you're doing to help me. Everything I'm doing to help you. I just got off the phone with you like 10 minutes ago. I don't even know what you look like. <laughs> and he's indebted to me because I did all this work. It, it was the phone call was the only time I have invested in that. Setting up the search while I'm talking to him on the phone. I got all his contact information. I just wrote the note before we hung up the call. You know, Randy, it was great talking to you today. Look forward to helping you take advantage of the current market conditions. No, I, me, or my. You know, and it says, Brad. And the note went in the mail. There's not even a card in there. He's a buyer looking for properties. I did not put the card in that note, but he's gotten two letters in the last, or he'll get two letters over the next seven days, and he'll get another call from me in 14 days. So it's this machine that's running where I just hit this campaign and spit. And it kicks the, it tells me, it gives me a to do to go touch him on social media or find him on, I might not find him on social media. So the two's just done. I tried to find him, couldn't find him. He's not on social media. I'm done. I did my task for the day. Yeah. That's amazing. It just, it Fun seems, stuff. you make it sound so easy. It's inexpensive, um, <laughs> which is amazing. <laughs> yeah. It's, it doesn't cost anything. I mean, I, and that's just off the free stuff. Like I only get my leads from anything free. So if you call me and you say, hey, we're selling leads today for 10 bucks a month. I'm like, well, tell you what, I'll pay you a whole lot more. I'll pay you 25% referral. You just give me the leads. They don't like that. But the ones that do, so one out of 10 will actually be have either a referral program or they don't charge anything, you know, yeah. whatever. I don't care. Um, I've all, I got enough leads coming in because I'm more about connection than the amount of leads. Right. I don't want 15,000 leads in my database. I want 1000 talk to's in my database. Right. So, yeah, yeah. And you mentioned, um, that this is, this is a long game. Um, so I want to ask you how much time do you think agents should expect to invest in prospecting their SOI and how long does it 
take to start seeing real results? I know you touched on it awesome. a little bit, but yeah, no, awesome. So we know, and you, you guys have been doing this long enough. You've watched everybody come through the initial result that every agent gets when they get into real estate is different from an agent to agent. It depends on their energy level, how much, yeah. how much time they're willing to be on the phone, talk to strangers, knock on doors. So here's the fun part. You run both of these simultaneously. It's two different businesses. So in E-Myth, I just wrote E-Myth Real Estate Agent with Michael Gerber, who wrote E-Myth Books. Um, E-Myth was E-Myth or E-Myth Revisited, E-M-Y-T-H, is why small businesses don't work and what to do about it. He dumbs it down so simple that it's like, for me, when I read it, I'm like, duh. So it's about franchising and systematizing your business. So I did that 20 years ago. Um, I had a situation happen recently where my wife, Sonia was in a car accident in 2015, uh, March of 2015, had a head, a head on collision. Uh, she got spun around on the highway right over by Royals and chief stadium. And we got this one really bad intersection where you see, you know, the, the guardrails painted orange every single day, you know, somebody's always wrecking there. It's the death trap. Yeah. So she gets spun around, takes a head on collision. She survives the accident, but the dash smashed her hip socket with her femur, pushing her through and all that. Mm -hmm. She's 43 years old, 44 years old at that time. So she got a 12 week recovery. Now she was, she ran my business. She was the admin side of my business. I was the one that went out and created chaos every day in relationships and just talked to people and they had to try and keep up with me. Right. <laughs> um, but so she's off her feet for 12 weeks. Well, so she gets through that whole process week 14 after the accident. So two weeks after she's off crutches, she just doesn't wake up one day. Um, she's in bed. It's in the morning um, on June 23rd, actually. Her birthday was June 24th, which was, well, recording this just a couple days ago. Um, June 23rd, she's in bed, snoring, sleeping, um, and had had trouble sleeping. So I tried to wake her up at about 10 a.m. and she didn't respond and called 911. They came, got her stabilized, didn't act like anything was, you know, hey, we got her stabilized, everything's good, we'll get her to the hospital, see what's going on. Mm -hmm. Well, she doesn't, they lost her for about four minutes in the ambulance ride and about four minutes in the ER. So eight minutes without oxygen into your brain, uh, put her into what's called an anoxic brain injury. Um, layman's terms is she was a vegetable from that point forward. So I never talked to her again after after June 23rd. She was in a coma for five months. Now I did what I learned best from my friends and that's to always hang around the best agents, look at what they're doing, document their systems. So when I was in the hospital, I started asking the doctors, who's the top brain hospitals? Who's the top brain surgeons? Who's the, and you know, they're telling me anoxic brain injury. There is no repair. Once your brain dies a little bit, you don't get that back. Yeah. But I'm like, well, where's the best surgeon at? Where's the best hospital? And it was in Lincoln, Nebraska, about three hours from here. So I transported her there. Um, so while she's in that vegetative state, her body's working fine, but Sonia's not there. Uh, that was the last part to get oxygen because it was just, just enough, not oxygen to not be there, but just enough to keep her body alive, right? Not even on, on life support or anything. Her body's working. It's weird. Okay. Believe me, it's weird. Yeah. Interesting. So I'm by her side for five months waiting for this miracle wake up day. And also the body's functioning and nurses can't be there 24 seven. So mm -hmm. I was committed guys, I ran my business. I'm the only listing person on my team at the time this happened. It was me and Sonia and two other people, an assistant and a buyer specialist. So we had four people on our team. Two of us are out. Those two girls sold 97 homes over that next 12 months while I was gone for five months, like gone. They did not go on listing appointments. I had to come back one night a week from Lincoln to do the listing appointments. They just stacked them up. Wow. And they handled all the sign calls and the ad calls and the system ran my business while I was gone. So we sold 97 homes in 2015 with me being gone for five months. And I realized it was the email that I had helped me systematize it. So I called Michael Gerber 
And I mean, I just looked it up on Google. There's a phone number. You don't know if he's really going to get it. In fact, you're probably thinking he's no way is he going to get it. <laughs> um, and I just said, Mr. Gerber, thank you. Uh, you don't know me from Adam, but I implemented your book 20 years ago. Um, it's helped me sell 100 homes a year. And I was just out of my business for five months and sold 97 homes. He called me back and he said, that's a pretty big deal. Um, that's exactly, I mean, you're a student of the book. Like you implemented the book for real because most of us are technicians. And in the book, E-Myth, he talks about a technician is just stuck doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it every day. And if you guys leave for a week, you probably are on the bottom part of that roller coaster ride again. You got to rebuild your business back up. It doesn't just keep going. My business just keeps going. In fact, this year, I'm selling the 100 homes a year totally solo. No assistant, no nothing. Not because I want to, to prove a point <laughs> that the yeah. systems can carry a business for 100 sales, you know? Wow. Yeah, that's incredible. So Especially yeah. because they talk, agents talk about the market goes up and down. I mean, you have family emergencies, you have vacations you want to take, you want to live your life. Um, yeah. So in order to have that part of your life, um, you can have a system that works for you. That's amazing. Yeah, I'm talking to a lot of agents that, I mean, we're seeing more and more agents starting to come through the pipeline that can sell 50, 60, 70 homes by themselves. But yeah. you ask them about their life, they have no life. Yeah. There is no way selling six to eight homes a month, like you're not just totally consumed, right? right? My six homes a month do not require anybody else to help me. I can process my contracts. And this sounds crazy, you know, saying, oh, you should be putting your, your contracts in dot loop and getting the extra signatures. No, I've chunked it down into a system that, I'm doing five activities a day that have to do with this one contract, but I'm doing two more tomorrow and three more a week from now. And then nothing like that whole middle piece of a contract. There's nothing going on. You got all your signatures. You, you the documents are all in place. Now you don't start working again until a week before closing. So I've tracked it down to about 10 hours of physical time to get a contract from contract to close of actual touch hours. So, yeah. This is my, this is what I'm bringing to the industry is agents that are closing two, three and four deals a month are putting somewhere between 20 to 40 hours of work into a month. And they, yet they've lost their life. They have, they have no life. They have, they're missing out on things with the kids and it requires 40 hours of work for the whole month. That's not even 10 hours a week. I tell people all the time, I was, you know, I was working about 10 hours a week in real estate. That's it. Selling 100 homes a year and going and having fun. But it's because I documented it, systematized. I turned into a systems freak. And no matter what happens on a contact record, if I, if I listed a house today and they signed on the dotted line, I go start the new list to contract plan. And everything that needs to happen are the pictures uploaded to realtor.com shows up three days after I list the house. Because in the old days, it took 24 to 48 hours for realtor.com to pick it up. Yeah. So yeah. if, but if I list a house today, am I going to remember three days from now to go check realtor.com and add the extra photos to get extra exposure? Heck no. Cause I got something else going on. Yeah. So it, it, allow, it allows you to free your mind to take care of today's current situation. So when you do have a contract blowing up, you can actually be there attentive to it and make the right solutions and get done with it quicker versus trying to fit it into everything else or just stopping everything else. And, oh, my God, I just spent the last 48 hours saving this deal. It yeah. doesn't take 48 hours to save a deal, people. It takes one call to somebody to say there's a problem and then it takes six hours for that person to call you back but you're just sitting there waiting well worried about it for six hours when i'm on to my next task knocking it out and then when the phone call comes in we work out a solution and get it solved you know or or we don't whichever it is it doesn't matter wow that's incredible. Agents are going to love this because of how just easy and, and how you can have a life. And it's, I love this. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll call it simple yeah. because it's so easy. They, it, most people cannot digest it. It's like, it can't be this easy. Yeah. And, and when I'm helping people like really get this, as soon as they call and go, 
well, this and this and this. And I'm like, is it confusing? And are you getting lost? And is it messy? It's like, yeah, it's like, then you're not following the system because this is not easy or this is not hard. This is not messy. This is not confusing. You're making it messy and confusing. Yeah. Just put it in, hit start, do what it says every day. Yeah. And Brad, um, before we get into your system and talk more about the how and when, um, does this work for all agents or do they have to be more experienced? Can they be new, brand new? No, brand new. Um, I got a guy here now he's been working his tail off, um, hardcore four hours a day, calling strangers all the time. And and it's just like, dude, you love talking to people on the phone. You should be selling a hundred homes a year. Here's what he sent me this morning. When you're telling people about your system, tell them that that one of your clients said, this system is like having breakfast in bed. You don't have to think. (laughs) You just wake up and there's breakfast in bed. So he goes to his activity list and he just does what it says to do. You know, it's crazy. (laughs) I love it. Okay, so let's get in uh, more of the how and when and and more of your tactics, systems and strategies. Um, But first, uh, agents like to hear kind of a daily routine that agents um, have. I know daily routine helps with like mindset and uh, just having a routine is good. Can you go through with me your daily schedule and what you do first thing in the morning or when you get to the office or your thing like that? No, I love it. So there's three core things that need to happen every day. I need to put new relationships in the database Mm -hmm. and then I need to turn the system on and then just do what the system tells me to do. Yeah. So in my database, and it's not even the database that matters. I don't even want to say what it is because it just depends on what database you'll actually put five people in a day is the one you really need to use. Mm -hmm. However, kind of the logistics behind it is I run everything in my contact management system or my database through campaigns and action plans. And that is creating a series of events. Like I want this to happen on day zero. I want this to happen on day seven days later. I want yeah. this to happen 14 days, right? And what's critical is it's not cascading or it's not once I complete this activity, now the next activity can happen. It cannot run that way. McDonald's does not have a buzzer that says start the patties. Now, if you need more time, you know, just, hit this button and ignore it and let them go for a little longer. No, you have to flip them when the buzzer goes off. You have to. So it's a, I can't turn it off system so that I stay focused on my business and I don't, and I get off the roller coaster ride. Right. Right. So that happens day zero, day seven, day 14, day 32. So when I've got a contract, to close plan, it's always 45 days because that's what everything takes is about 45 days. But if one's closing in 30 days, I just start my plan 15 days ago. So it ends in 45 days from the contract time, but 30 days from today. Yeah. That's the techie side of it, right? So you just got to figure out how your system works. But my routine is I come in, I go to my pipeline to see if I added people yesterday. And if I didn't, I'm adding people right then, right to my feed form. And I don't, and really, it's just as simple as getting a name, address, phone number in and where they came from, right? Yeah. Then I go to my activities dashboard and I go to my letters and I highlight all the letters and I send them to the printer. They just start printing. Somebody's getting week one follow-up. Somebody's getting week 32 follow-up. Somebody's (laughs) getting a a for sale by owner week three follow-up. You know, everybody's getting different things based on what plan I'm running. And I have hundreds of plans. Yeah. Um, So I print, send my letters. I send my labels. Then I go to my calls and I print off my call list for the day, right? And it's usually 10 or 12 calls a day. Um, And then I go to my to-dos and I print that list off. So now I'll grab all my social media touches because this is typically about 6, 6.30 in the morning. I'm up before everybody else is up. And I'll print out my social media tasks. So it says, touch them on social media. So I just get on. Now this is my Facebook time and social media time. And I'm just sending messages. Hey, what's up? How you doing? Blah, blah, blah. Check, 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 right? Right. And then I've got to go to how many notes did I need to write? So I'll write those notes. Now, I I pretty much do that right when I put them in. Um, It's just, I know if I'm writing the note that I've gotten their address and they're going in on this plan. Yeah. Uh, So I just chunk it out. And then 
the to-dos that are left over are my contract processing stuff. Has this contract been sent to the lender? Um, so once that list is printed, then I just start knocking those out, which how long do I really need to pay somebody eight to 12 to $15 an hour, eight hours a day to have them send this contract to my lender in an email from dot loop. I literally already have dot loop open cause I deal with it every day. I go to the file, I select the contract, I send it to my lender. I just saved a $40,000 a year, right? <laughs> I call this, my database is my $50,000 a year assistant. And I love that. once I get this system in place and that's my routine and I got that routine down and I'm cranking now, if it's working right and it's freed my time up to have a life and double my business, now I'm taking the money for the salary for my assistant and setting it aside in the bank account. Once I store up a few months of their salary, now I can hire an assistant. Right. And now I've got a system in place that I just change all the, uh, all the contract tasks to their name in front of it. And I print that out and give it to them every day and say, here's your stuff to do today. Yeah. There's no training required other than just how to get into dot loop. And I mean, how, how often do you have to train that? So, you know, I, I don't have to train people on contracts or what this means, or it says get a signature on this document. So we get a signature on that document. Has the warranty plan been ordered? I'm telling you, once my assistant orders one or two warranty plans, I don't have to show her how to, her or him how to do that again. Mm -hmm. It just comes up and they go to this website, they order it and it's done. Mm -hmm. So how many times have you forgot to order a warranty plan or Gosh, when I, I started selling in Minnesota, okay, so it gets really cold there, <laughs> as oh, cold yeah. as you think it does, right? <laughs> um, and then when I moved to Kansas City, so that was my first three years in real estate, and then I got the opportunity to move back home to Kansas City, where I'm from. We didn't have termites in Minnesota. So <laughs> every sale that I had for the first year, I'd get to closing. Where's the termite report? I said, what are these freaking termite things you guys are talking about? Yeah. I've never seen one, right? <laughs> So my deals would get delayed and my checks would get delayed in this system. It says, has the termite been ordered? When's the inspection in? Put it on the calendar. So the inspections are done by then. So it's all just automated. And I just, I just do what the system says to do. What, what system is this? How do you organize all of this? Um, well, so I, I actually use top producer, but it's really okay. the campaigns and action plan. So they have this activities dashboard, that shows all your tasks for the day. Okay. Now my task for today come from when I started that plan. So today's task might be the second day of action items on a client that I started two days ago on contract to close plan. So I already did day zero the day I started the plan. I did day one, the one day after I'm on day two, but somebody else is on day 45 and they're closing tomorrow. So has the, uh, sign been picked up has the lockbox been picked up. I'm telling you if you sell a lot of real estate You're losing probably five to ten thousand dollars a year in signs and lockboxes that you don't go back and pick up Yeah, because if you're picking up all your signs and lockboxes, you're not selling more than one house a month I can tell you that right now <laughs> That's the only way I'd remember to pick up every sign and lockbox. Yeah so yeah. So what do you think makes your system or approach special, unique, uh, the most successful for you um, so the agents can know? Well, it's keeping it simple, all right? Yeah. So the first thing I did was I documented everything I do. Now, this is even when I had a team. What did I expect my team to do from the time they started showing houses until they wrote a contract? We documented it. So, and it came from what I did. It's what my buyers liked about what I did. That's why they did business with me. That's why they hired me. So I documented it and it's everything I do. Mm -hmm. Even if it's something like, um, you know, what's good about me is when somebody calls me, they get a call back within a minute. Well, then that needs to be documented in your system that you return a call within one minute and the system needs to tell whoever's on your team, it's been one minute, you better freaking call them right now, yeah. you know? So it's, it's what makes it work is it's my system. What I've done is I've systematized creating systems. Yeah. And I, you can tell me like right now I could create your whole system from the time you find somebody interested about expireds until they actually buy the program and get red X. And there's a whole system in between of what you do. That's so awesome that we just document it and make it happen. So it's everybody, everybody can use it because it's their system. Right. 
I love, so, I love that. Um, yeah. So take us into your day as if we were standing over your shoulder. Take us through what um, a sphere of influence, just prospecting phone call sounds like, or like you say that you write letters, like just take us into what that looks like and sounds like. Well, so again, I just go to my calls. So my calls would come up and yeah. there's different calls in there. So there's an internet lead that came in that I called them. 30 seconds after the lead came in, nobody answered, got their voicemail. Yeah. You know, hey, this is Brad Corn with the Corn Team. Uh, we haven't met yet. You don't know me from Adam, but we cross paths either on the internet or something. You were looking for some property. So I'm just trying to get a hold of you, see if you're buying or selling. Yeah. Right. Now I start the internet lead conversion plan. I put their name and their email or their phone number, whatever I have. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and I might go to Google and Facebook and see if they pop up, especially if they have a unique name, just to see if there's an address or whatever. But it's irrelevant. That plan starts running. And on day zero, it says, did you call? Right. Do I have their phone number and email? Is it to do? The next thing is call. Day one after the plan starts is call. Day two after the plan starts is call. Day three after the plan starts is call. Right. So yeah. that's my initial call. I put them in. I started the plan. Now, tomorrow morning, I come down to my office and I go to my dashboard and I print out my calls and there's John Smith. So I call John Smith. Hey, John, this is Brad Corn. We cross paths on the internet. Um, just trying to get a hold of you to see if you're actually buying or selling. Tom the day three, John Smith pops up. I don't even, I don't care if I've talked to him, not talked to him, if I made the call, didn't make the call. I don't even know who John Smith is yet. He's <laughs> just on my call list. Yeah. So I call, hey, John, this is Brad Corn, And it does say day three internet call, you know? Yeah. So then I'll say, hey, John, I know you're calling on some properties and they're sold. Um, you're, you're calling on things that are already sold. You're looking for a good deal and you're missing them. Uh, in fact, I probably, I, I did help one person get a good deal yesterday. So you've already missed out on one. Uh, just give me a call back. Let me know. If you're not buying right now, that's cool. I just want to be available to help you take advantage of the current market. Yeah. That's it. So uh, you just heard every script for three days. I've got 15 seconds invested into this client. Yeah. Now, John's name is not going to pop up again in, my, in front of me for another three or four days. And then he's only going to pop up one more time about three weeks after that. And then I'll never see John Smith's name again. Yeah. I made five attempts to get him on the phone. If I didn't get him by then and see 45 days from now is when the plan ends and it's the last call. And I'm just going to call, see if I randomly get him on to answer the phone. And he's gotten my messages enough. He might recognize my number. And the, some emails went out a couple of times because I don't have his address yet. Yeah. So a couple of emails went out. Hey, it's been 10 days since we started leaving you messages. It's been 20 days since we crossed paths. It's been 30 days. We've helped three people put houses under contract. You know, those are my emails that are going out. Mm -hmm. And they say stuff like, hey, you got a live person here. You know, I like that one too. But at the end of the plan, it says it's been 45 days. Have you converted? Well, if I made that call and that pops up, I haven't converted. Them. So, so then I just put them on a forever email drip plan. That's some stupid generic thing that's built into the system. Now, I don't care what it says. It's like, all right, we'll just see if they convert someday and less than 1% will, but I'm not going to waste any more time on it. Right. So, uh, I mean, that's what the system does. That's what I do every day. And that's what my calls sound like. Um, most of my calls, so sphere stuff, it's just, they're on my list and they've been in their house. They might be on a 10 year follow up plan from when they bought their house. Mm -hmm. And I literally have a call every quarter and then I have a social media touch in between that. So every month and a half, I'm either direct messaging them on social media or I'm calling them one of those two things for them. It's just like, Hey, it's Brad. How's it going? Haven't talked to you in a little while. Just I check in. That's my call. I'm done. Wow. That simple. Yep. And if I ever get them on the phone, you know, hey, how's everything going? Oh, it's great. Or they could say it's totally nuts around here. My daughter's getting married. Now I'm, I'm daughter's getting married. Okay, yeah. I'm hearing all kinds of real estate opportunities that I'm going to come back to and maybe manually schedule another follow up call in two days or you know all that stuff to then say, hey, I know you were crazy last week, but you mentioned your daughter's getting married. Are they buying a house? Oh, they're going to, but they're saving up right now. So probably six months. Okay, great. There you go. That's how that one would roll. But most of the time, you know, I might get them on the phone and they're like, oh, everything's great. You know, it's been, you know, 
family's doing good, blah, blah, blah. Well, hey, today's call is about business. Do you have just a minute to give me some help? Well, yeah, what do you need? Now, see, I've talked to them probably four or five times before this over the yeah, last yeah. year or two, right? right? So now I can throw that in whenever I want. If I need extra business this week, I'm saying, hey, today's call is about business. You got a minute to give me some help. I'm like, yeah, I do. What do you need? It's like, yeah. yeah, you hear anybody talking about real estate over the next week? Will you just call me with their name and number? And they're like, oh, absolutely. Great. Can I call you back on Friday and just see who you might? Well, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. I drop them a note and say, thanks for agreeing to help me out to this week. And I'll call you in a couple of days. Well, now for those next two or three days, they're really focusing for the word real estate. And I probably get about 25% more referrals with that referral system versus just, hey, if you think of somebody, will you have them call me? Yep. How many times do you get a referral from that? Right. Okay. So. That's awesome. Well, that is a pretty simple system. I mean, it kind of works for you, like you said, which is amazing. And um, so I think just to wrap up everything, is there anything else that comes to mind um, that agents ought to know that we haven't discussed yet about sphere of influence? Um, you know what? Everybody is a potential buyer and seller. You just have to be thinking over a five to seven year period versus right now. Yeah. If you stay focused on right now, you're going to be one of the 60 to 80 percent that burn out in three, three years, a year to three years. Mm -hmm. So I call that the grindstone. Now, if you like the grindstone, stay there. Just layer this piece in so you don't have to be on the grindstone for your whole career. Right. So the thing I will tell you is the people that are great at converting Internet leads and getting a lot of Internet leads and growing big businesses. They don't have a lot of hair. They do not love going in and cold calling for four hours a day. They do not love knocking on doors. We can do it. I can go do it right now. I can get on the phone. I call strangers for four hours. I'm going to pick up business. I don't mind it. But if I did it five days a week, four weeks a month, 12 months a year, ugh, right. it ain't going to happen because nobody does it that consistently. Yeah. And when you do find somebody that does, oh my gosh, they're just so robotic. They're not having fun doing it. They, mm -hmm. they can't. And we'll find our one or two anomalies, I'm sure. But you know what I mean. Yeah. The average yeah. agent, guys, you're going to make so much money in real estate just making friends all day long. And you don't really have to make friends where you have to remember everything. I don't remember a lot about my system, but when I call somebody and say, you know, hey, I was thinking of you today. Well, it's because the system told me to call them today. I really wasn't thinking of them until I saw their name on my list, but I'm not lying either because I thought of them as soon as I saw their name on the list. <laughs> right. So, yeah, just keep it simple. Go out and talk to people, talk to people, talk to people. Forget about being a salesperson. You don't have to sell anything. Mm -hmm. When you get branded as the realtor, they will call you for advice. Yeah, like you said in the beginning, just getting your name out there so the people know that when they hear Brad, they know, okay, real estate. And that's really it. That's just about making connections, making friends. And I love that you make it sound fun and that you can still have a life. And um, really, you're just making friends. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for uh, sticking around with me here, Brad, and letting me ask you a couple questions about Sphere of Influence. But um, I think... That wraps up today. So thanks so awesome. much. Awesome. No, it was fun being here. Thank you so much for having me on. And, um, you know, if somebody wants more information on this and just playing some free stuff, yeah. um, I've got videos where I talk about your database as a gold mine, what the relationship's about. It's all free stuff. Um, but if they go to emythrealestateagent.com, e or make the phone ring again.com, one of those two. There's all <laughs> kinds of free stuff on those two sites that uh, just go there, register, it's free. Watch the videos, plug into them, watch them a couple times and start moving your brain out of the mass marketing to the individual relationship marketing. Yeah. Perfect. So a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Love, love connecting with you guys again. Awesome. Thank you so much, Brad. Uh, it was nice to meet you. Um, you but I hope to connect later. All right. Okay. Have a good one. You too.